to back to back i live radio how you doing what's good it's in catchy the lyrical sitting in my zone here vibing and listening to i live and if you don't know get to know and if you do know you don't know and if you know then relax and enjoy the ride you're listening to i live radio this is jay most enjoy online and on the go on your mobile phone we're the internet's best choice Vibes and Vinyl is here every Friday live at 8 p.m. on iLiveRadio.com. Formerly of Toronto's FM Radio Airwaves, DJs Gene King and Ray Prasad are in the house once again to continue their tradition, promoting great house music to the world. You will hear exclusive releases and sometimes traveling back in time via some of the best disco, soul, funk, and house. So keep it locked and enjoy the ride. DJs Gene King and Ray Prasad have provided their listeners since 1996. Vibes and vinyl in your face. Join me, Patrick O'Morris, for the Patrick O'Morris Show right here on iLive Web Radio, Sunday afternoons from 2 to 3 p.m. Hey, what about me? Uh, Naida, hi. Hi. Um, who let you in the studio? You're trying to record without me? Um, okay, let me try this one more time since you're here. Join me, Patrick O'Morris, for the Patrick O'Morris Show right here on iLive Web Radio with my co-host, Naila T. Hello. See you next Sunday, 2 to 3 p.m. You're listening to iLive Radio. Changing the way you listen to radio. iLive Radio. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, this week, once again, I'm flying solo because if you see my co-host, Naila T, um, you could uh, just let her know I'm looking for her. Maybe I should get word and send out a search party. I'm not sure. It would be great if she was here because, you know, I'm al- we're always talking about her here and how she keeps switching things up. One minute it's long, and the next minute it's short. I keep trying to get her to hook me up with whomever's giving her the long thing because I could use a little bit myself, but um, she never does. And so this week she ditched me again. So I am here by myself. And um, actually, it's kind of cool. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't send a search party for her. Um, I've got a guest in the studio with me this week. Um, She is an award-winning author. And she started a program, um, sort of a movement in a way, uh, called No More Hair Bullying. And so we're going to talk a little bit about no more hair bullying and loving me and, you know, all this sort of niceness around natural black hair. Um, it seems like there, in society today, it seems like there's so, so much struggle. And I, I talk to women all the time and, I, and they'll say, oh, you know, I do this, I do this because this is what black men want from us. You know, they want the long hair and they want the girl with the long hair. And most, most brothers that I talk to, they're like, dude, man, I just try not to say anything about the hair because I don't want to get in any trouble. You know, if she wants it to be permed, it's cool. If she wants it to be natural, I, I, just, don't, I just don't want to get in any trouble. So we're going to talk a little bit about that sort of stuff. So with no further ado, my guest on today's show is Angelette. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing very well. <laughs> and... It's Angelo. Oh, sorry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> see, I told you before the show. You did. You warned me, I so warned I'm you okay. <laughs> that I am. See, that's one of the things that Naila is good for here. She's, she's not a serial name killer like I am, you know, and uh, it's the it's French okay. thing. That we talked about okay. that, too. Yes, we did. Okay, my apologies. Uh, okay, so I'm not even going to attempt the last name because... It's Angelo Ndungmo. Ndungmo. Yes. If you ignore the N, you're pretty safe. Okay, Dungmo. Right. Ndungmo. Ndungmo. Yeah. Ndungmo. Okay. <laughs> so um, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Um, okay. So you are a, an award-winning author. And yes. uh, maybe let's talk a little bit about your books and you know where did that come from? Why did you choose to write these books, Loving Me? And what exactly is Loving Me? Well, you know, um, growing up, I didn't have a lot of materials that engaged me and helped me feel like I was part of the human experience growing up. So I feel, as many black children do, we, we kind of struggle with our identity mm-hmm. very early on. And as I grew and I learned a lot of information just historically about who we are and all of these things, I thought, well, there's 
certain common things that we do struggle with. And if I just known some of it when I was a young girl, maybe I wouldn't have struggled so much. And um, I was watching a lot of uh, Oprah at the time, um, Living Your Best Life, this her Living Your Best Life series. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, well, one of the things that I would regret not having done is to inspire children because from for me I've always gravitated towards working with children I love children and so um, I was part of a book club here in Brampton a knowledge bookstore and the owner shout there, out to knowledge bookstore shout, a shout out a huge shout out as well as a different book list oh, yeah. they've just been such amazing supporters of my work but it was Sean who originally uh, pushed me to get to writing because I would write um, reviews, book reviews on his mm -hmm. website at the time when he had the book club. And he just said he felt like my writing was great and I really should explore the world of writing. So these two things kind of stuck with me. And I remember hearing the words and just starting to write them down um, for, for loving me, actually. Yeah. This actually came about just as a hobby. I only expected to ever really write loving me and then get it out of my system and say, okay, we're good. Um, I've always enjoyed writing. But what happened is when I released Loving Me in 2008, it really took off. I, I got such a great response from parents. And I, they were constantly asking me, you know, I've got a boy. Could you do something for them? Hey, what about the, the boys, right? Yeah, we, we, yeah, us guys, we always seem to get left out. Right. What's up with that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So I just decided to listen. I just felt like they're speaking to me and there's something maybe missing here. And I took the time to do some research. And then out came about a year later, boy, I am loving me. And since then, I, it's just been a phenomenal response from parents, from children, from all around. So I'm, you know, I'm just really thankful um, with just the reception of my work. What's... Um in, not to giving too much away from your book because mm -hmm. you want people to go out and buy the book. Of course. Right? But um, what is the whole, what is it, what is it about? Like, well, loving Obviously, me. loving yourself, I'm assuming, yes. right? Yes, yes. Um, but it's really an introduction to who you are as a young child or a young, well, the young female or a young male. Um, it does speak to the black child, mm -hmm. but it also speaks to all children because it's a strong message to learn how to love who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we don't go through that self-awareness until later on. And so what I did in Loving Me was to add in key things. Loving Me introduces children to their awesome hair, the mm -hmm. melanin in their skin, the fun it is to be who they are as a girl or as a boy, mm -hmm. um, to dream big, you know, um, just simple key things that I, that parents can read to their children and create a world of questions because parents are the ones who get to introduce to their children first, their beauty, their, their you know, and, and it's great. It, they're great building blocks. Was there a difference? Um, well, I'm assuming there would be a difference, but, mm -hmm. um, for you to write for little boys, Versus little girls. Absolutely. Because little boys, I mean, I would see boys, I think they're so adorable. And I I could only kind of guess what I thought they would struggle with. And I didn't want to assume. So I spent the time asking a lot of males, when you were growing up, what were you struggling with? Mm -hmm. What were those main struggles? So there seemed to be common things popping up, which were similar to the girls, but then a key, you know, a few key things that were different, and that helped me tailor "Boy, I'm Loving Me" specifically to them. Uh, did you um, did you ask the guys about the you know the whole natural hair thing? Well, you know, I did ask them, but not not specifically. What do you think about girls' natural hair? I asked them about their own hair. Oh, okay, and. Um, surprisingly to find out that boys also struggle with their hair, particularly if they choose a style like locks that are traditionally worn. A lot of them have gotten teased growing up and mm -hmm. different things, but I want our kids to understand that they're perfect the way they are. They're born unique on purpose. Mm -hmm. That's the strongest message I try to instill in them through, the, through my work. There are no mistakes. Oh, so um, where are these books available? Well, right now, these books are available at Knowledge Bookstore, as well as at a different book list, okay. available in, in my Loving Me Boutique on Etsy.com. So right now, I'm, I'm really happy 
with how they've been doing since 2010, 11, they've been the best sellers oh. in the in the store. So why I'm just really thankful about that is because they're going up against published author. Okay. An entrepreneur, if you will. I just believed in my dream and I felt like the publishing industry may not be ready for this, but I'm ready to put this out now because our children needed this. So mm -hmm. the response for them to be the top sellers over all of those books, it just floors me. And I'm just very humbled and thankful. Wow. Yeah. Um, to self-publish, it, it comes with its own challenges yeah. that I'm a little bit familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, you know, self-publish comes with is a huge challenge, and then um, yes. you know to end up becoming a bestseller, that's that's quite amazing. Um, that would be one heck of a journey, I'm sure. Oh, it has been coming from you know somebody sort of bugging you to do this. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So you're actually embracing it. Um, you know, what would you say to other authors who are kind of in the same situation that you are, who are thinking publishing uh, is. Did I? What was the feedback? Well, it was you know, it was typical to people be ready for something like this, or it's not something that they're interested in mm -hmm. at this time, or just no response. And that's when I realized, you know, I understand my community because I'm a part of it, mm -hmm. and for someone else to not feel that they're ready to take this on, that's okay. But I, I feel like this was put in my lap mm -hmm. and it's my responsibility. This is the way I choose to give back to our community, to our children, to our next generation coming up. So I went for it and I had to like dig in and not let go and just keep pushing. So I just want to thank all of my love bugs, I call them my, my fans of my work because they keep me going every mm -hmm. just love this book or a parent you know my child reads this every single night or right. you know they walk me in um awesome lady state told me orders her customer when oh. when they home when she sells them home what age group targeted at targeted for four to eight you're hearing from is that it goes up to nine because the messages mm -hmm. Um, later on, I can maybe read like a couple of pages so people can sure. get an idea. Cool. The last things that I heard recently was a young boy who had received this book went to his mom and asked, hey, when was Marcus Garvey born? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, where did you hear about Marcus Garvey? How do you know him? In the book that uh, Dion Witter gave me. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing to see that passing on. That was the point mm -hmm. for parents who don't know who the characters are they can I mean we can all google now <laughs> but uh yeah it's just it's just a great experience that's cool um so you know you publish this work about mm -hmm. loving me loving myself I guess it was sort of a natural natural I can't even talk today natural transition you know more bullying what about that because um you know, you know I I heard about the uh, the the TDSB principal correct that uh, allegedly you know um, kind of a conversation with uh, with a, a student about her natural hair mm -hmm. um, is that what started this for you well not just this I think that was sort of like the 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 straw that broke the camel's back if you will that mm -hmm. I felt you know what I I have to take this on on level. Because mm -hmm. as the adult, I have to stand up for our children, right? Because who about about us? Mm -hmm. So I just felt it's not just her story. This is all of our story. So I grew up with the same um, curiosity about my hair, um, disrespect towards my hair, confusion around my hair. And hair is such a big deal. Can I deal. touch your hair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So it's, it's uh, you know, and I want to be fair. Like, I understand. Like, our community is the only community that really has s very unique curl patterns to our hair. Okay. So I have to be honest. I can understand not being part of the community, that fascination. What does that feel like, right? Yeah. What is Because we see how it looks, but what does that feel like? So I don't, I mean, I understand the curiosity, but being on the receiving end of it, on top of other, sometimes innuendos, it just feels a little uncomfortable, like, 
why would you want to touch my hair? You know, mm -hmm. but I think education is the best way to overcome anything. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like we're blessed to be unique and I embrace being unique. I don't feel like we should have to change. We're the only community actually who was asked to alter our hair to the point where it's no longer recognizable to our community. And I just think that's ridiculous that our hair is inherent to us. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like me seeing somebody with blue eyes and saying, I need you to undergo an operation so that your eyes are brown so that I can feel more comfortable. That, you, you, I mean, you just can't do that. Mm -hmm. You have to learn. I think all of our differences were meant to be embraced and celebrated. Can you imagine if we literally all look the same? You know? So I feel like we... A little we, bland. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... It would be so boring. I think that we have to like get over it and learn that as human beings, we may not be ex able to explain why we're all so different, but it was meant to be, clearly. But it, right? in, in, in the, yeah. Does it really matter, though? Because, I mean, almost everybody's got stuff you got to wonder if, if, you know, if it's real or not. Well, <laughs> you know, of like, course. You know, pretty much all cultures now are sort of embracing that, whether it's weave or... Um, perming or, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have much hair, so I don't really know all these things that <laughs> the, the women do their hairs. Yes. But um, the point I'm making is that, you know, somebody from the, from the outside looking in might be saying, hey, you know, all cultures are kind of doing this. Is it really a reflective? Is it so much that, you know, in the black community, you're being told you need to, you know, change, you know, who you are to fit into society? In 2016, is it still that way? Well, yes, as we see from the many stories out there. And those are just the ones hitting the airwaves. That's not even all of the other ones that are happening and getting swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. So remember, it's a choice if someone from another community chooses to put in a weave or not. It's no, We're actually being told we must, or we must alter our curl pattern mm -hmm. so that it looks more European to make the office more comfortable or to make, to be able to secure work for our families. You know, it just doesn't make sense that I can't get hired or get a promotion because I'm culturally wearing a hairstyle that grows out of my hair. This is the head that, I mean, that's just the way it is. So it what, what, are, what are some of the ways that, um, you know, they, the evidence of that type of an attitude may, might display itself that may not be, you know, uh, easily recognizable? Well, I mean, it's that subtle, oh, uh, in relation to hair, it's usually yeah. that, oh, um, you know, you can't wear your hair like that. It's inappropriate. Meanwhile, you're actually wearing your own hair. Mm. You're told, and, and I don't want to give the appearance that this is only being told by other community members because we too are carrying on this burden. Mm -hmm. We too are telling, like the, the incident that just, just happened in the Bahamas. The school principal suspended a girl for wearing her hair out, her natural curl, hair curl pattern that grows out of her head. She wore it in a crown and put a bandana. Mm -hmm. The vice principal felt it was unkempt, ungroomed, and suspended her. And this was, sorry, where? In the Bahamas. In the Bahamas. Right? Okay. So this is, I mean, I did start No More Hair Bullying back in December. I was very blessed to have Lawrence Curry, he's an amazing award-winning photographer, come on board mm -hmm. and uh, do photography. I was blessed to have uh, Gemini from G98, Jonathan Shaw from G98 come on board. Mm -hmm. I had wonderful professionals come on board. The goal was to connect uh, professional adults who are natural mm -hmm. with young children coming up who are also natural to show I, that I there is success. I, I'm, I'm natural. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, there's, there's not naturally baldish, sort yeah. of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would I be allowed to come out? <laughs> of course. You know, so when if I do another photo shoot, absolutely, because this is the thing. Our children need to see that there is success as who you are, mm -hmm. right? I think we need to embrace who we are. I think that that once you embrace who you are, the, the, other, the rest of the world has to change too. But because there's a lot of misconceptions that we're still carrying on from, from the past and bringing that forward, it's clashing with the new movement of realizing that, we're perfect the way we are. We don't have to change. It's, you know. Um, how, so as, as a woman with natural hair. Yes. You know, um, there are a lot of uh, struggles that, uh, that you would face. Yes. Right? Um, and you talked about, you know, what society sort of puts 
and then um, that pressure that society puts. And then you also spoke about, you know, within our own community, mm-hmm. the pressures that are there. Maybe you could talk a little bit about within our own community and how how we ourselves can shift that. Well, we can shift it through educational materials. You know, we can shift it. There, there is a struggle that exists because, let's face it, through slavery that happened to us many, many moons ago, mm-hmm. the whole point of teaching us to cover our hair, just like mm-hmm. there was periods of time where we did have our hair out, it was shaved, it was this, it was that. Um, we ha- we weren't allowed to wear it out, so then we started wearing wraps to cover it. We always had to hide it, adjust it, alter it to make mm-hmm. others comfortable. Um, hey, this is our hair. It's just hair, (laughs) you know what I mean? So if that makes you feel uncomfortable, then you need to work on that, not me. And uh, just to speak to, yeah, just to speak to amongst our community, this is why you're seeing those um, people in, like the principals telling, and there are black principals telling black students you must change. These are ideas that have been carried on for generations. But through education, not, I'm not talking about a traditional education where you go and you learn how to be a doctor or a lawyer. I'm talking about cultural education, which is what the Loving Me series provides. Mm-hmm. It helps to unwind all the, all the mixed messages that were pretty negative and destructive. So, uh, um, you know, from society on the outside looking in, they're saying, well, you know, it's it's a black principal telling a black student, you know, Mm -hmm. go comb your hair, Mm -hmm. you know, or something like that. Yeah. Um, Why should I really be worried about this? This It's not going to impact me. It's, it's, you know, it seems like it's a problem within their community Mm -hmm. that they need to sort of deal with. Mm -hmm. Well, that internal problem is also an external problem. These situations happen to have hit the news because... I mean, it's outrageous, period. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a black person saying it or a white person. But the reality is those attitudes also exist in the external communities, which is what makes it so difficult. And it is tragic when you do see a black person who should be uplifting a child and like being proud of the fact that you realize these days you don't have to change. You don't have to hide who you are. Mm -hmm. You don't have to change, but instead kind of shaming them and you no know, continue the lies continue the the mis messaging you shouldn't feel good about your hair it's it's sad you know i don't i don't dislike that principle i i know where that messaging comes from and i but i just feel it's sad that she's been on the earth all of these years and hasn't been able to move on from that but hopefully maybe that was her journey maybe that's why she had to go through that to realize there is a whole other way. I mean, the natural hair movement has put a dent in perm sales. People are realizing, I don't have to change who I am. I don't want to change who I am. I don't even want to pretend I hate my hair. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of people going through, quote unquote, the big chop. There's a lot of people just, no, I've been like this now for X, Y, Z. We're starting to see a shift. There's a lot of black women who have been natural now for years and years and years. So mm-hmm. I'm just happy that to see that, you know, they say the revolution won't be televised, but I do believe it will be Instagrammed. So, <laughs> so follow those accounts because it's amazing to see like we can celebrate our own hair. Even black women are now who are still opting to alter their hair. Mm-hmm. They're now taking over the business side. They're putting out their own styles of hair, their own um, hair textures and all this kind of stuff. And, and also capitalizing on this billion dollar industry. Yeah. That's the, the other piece of the puzzle that, yeah. um, I, I don't know, the big elephant in the room that not a whole a lot of people are talking about. And that is um, from a, a corporate standpoint, it's not good business if a lot of black women are no longer perming their hair. Correct. Or if they're going natural. They eat off of our shame. Yes. So is there, um, do you think that that adds to the pressure? Well, of course, because that's, it, of course it does, because there's such pressure around us to conform and want to change, to look different than what we are, because that's what keeps them in the finest of cars, traveling to the world's most beautiful places and buying the biggest of homes. Can you imagine Mm -hmm. if we now just tomorrow woke up and said, I'm good. So is it that, is it that, um, okay. So are you like hating on women who don't have natural hair? Not at all. Saying, you know, if you have, you know, if you go on your perm, your hair and you, you know, do all this fake stuff to it, then, you know, that you're a, 
uh, you're hurting the cause? <laughs> no, not at all. Because the whole thing is, I want to address the reason why we do things. I mm-hmm. think we have the choice to do whatever we want. Okay. But a lot of times when we are doing things, we're doing it out of shame or out of, I. If, if you're just doing that, you know what, I have got really, really thick hair. I'm opting to do this because this is going to be manageable. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. But a lot of times, that's really not the reason under the the underlying reason i just don't want people to have to feel that shame anymore and to feel like there was actually something wrong with them meanwhile it's the negativity and the method of entrapping our minds why this was even introduced into our community to begin with i feel like that's what we need to be aware of that if we want to grow our hair in its fullest crowned glory why can't we Mm -hmm. that's our hair i would never look at somebody else whose hair i've seen women from other communities with shoulder length hair, hair all the way down to their ankles. I would, I, not once did it come across in my mind to say, you need to chemically alter your hair so it's no longer recognizably from your culture and looks like mine. Hmm. That, and that's where no more hair bullying comes around. We are being hair bullied. We are being told that we're not good enough. We are being held from opportunities and all this because of our curl pattern in our hair that grows naturally. So that's just, it's, it's, it's not okay. What do you think, the, what are the implicant, uh, again, I can't talk today. The, okay. Maybe I should have had that drink. Um, <laughs> the implications, you know, for um, young women who are growing up today, uh, who, are, um, who are being freed, in a way, from, from this cycle. What do, you, what do you think the implications of that going forward would be? Well, the implications, of course, for the industries that are benefiting, I mean, they would start to just crash. And that's Mm -hmm. a problem for them because they make just too much money. Mm -hmm. I think that's why the drive is so hard to keep us um, unaware of the truth, if you will, Mm -hmm. um, to keep us fixated on altering and changing. And you would be so much more beautiful if you just look like me. It's too bad you weren't born like me, but I can get you kind of close if you just buy this pack. You know, the implications are, the reality is that, what would we, I mean, I'm curious to know sometimes, I'm like, what would we do with all of that money? If we we were just okay with how we were made. Yeah. And we understood that we were beautiful just as we are. I think I what need to start we? a hair care business. <laughs> well, you know, apparently that's what that's the new trend. There's a lot of natural hair care lines sprouting up because of the demand now to remain natural. Not to say that you can't change your hair. I don't want to at all make it seem like you're somehow wrong to want to wear a different style. No, a style, not at all. But many of us as well change our hair because we feel we have to. Mm. You know, and that's really what I'm addressing. We we shouldn't be hair bullied. I think my product would be scalp care treatment. <laughs> Jason, would you buy that? Would you, you, you wouldn't buy that, Jason? Scalp care? <laughs> for, for, for us brothers who, you know, hey, that we, would make we, a lot we don't have the hair, but we got to take care of the scalp, make sure it's nice and, you know, smooth and shiny and it's, there's no flakes or nothing. Well, you know, I do see a lot of, pro- I'm telling you, go on Instagram, you see a lot of amazing products coming out now yeah. from people of the community. They're now have, have taking you, have back Have you seen that anything money. about scalp care? Because well, that's mine. Not scalp care, which is unique. Like, so you should come out with so that <laughs> before somebody else that. does. <laughs> but I have seen this amazing product. It's like um, if you struggle with hair loss, you can like shake it on. Like, and the, yeah, you shake it on and it's like these little hair flakes that gather. And by the time they're done, you can't even tell that the person was struggling was to begin like with. It's fascinating. Chia hair thingies? You, you it's, it's a male who actually put created some that. Chia seeds and just water it every day. <laughs> I don't think you can water it every day, but it's amazing, you know. Or it's a, you sprinkle it on. I, I, yeah. I remember back in like I don't know. I'm, I might be dating myself here, but like it was like in the <laughs> '80s or '90s or somewhere around there. There was a spray-on hair thing that that they used to sell some infomercial it was, it was spray on hair yeah it's like if you were balding or something you'd spray this thing on your head but then you couldn't go outside in the rain <laughs> so it's like an improved maybe he what he did was improve it because now you sprinkle <laughs> you sprinkle it. Okay. so um okay so there, there, there was a time when uh, black men permed there yeah a lot of black men yeah. did that um i and I'm, I'm assuming for the similar reasons uh and but that sort of went out of Except for a few people remaining, you know, like the Al Shopton, <laughs> you know, that still still do that. Yeah. But um, what I guess I never really even thought about that. Like, what what was the shift? 
in, in, uh, for black men as to why they stopped doing that. But black women still continue to do that. Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, I do believe that men and women are <clears throat> treated differently. Black men became popular and cool. Oh, we did? Yeah. In, There's like a we huge in, demand for y'all. Space? I mean, of course, <laughs> you know, but... Um, I always thought it was the other way around. No, well, you know, women were, were great, but except for if you would just change your hair. And I think that that has to mm. change. I think that everyone should be as they are if they choose to be. Right? Or maybe it's because we were all going bald and then it didn't really no. matter. Well, from that perm, yeah, it's so damaging to our hair. And that's the other thing we haven't really talked about, and that is the, the health implications yeah. of these chemicals long term. Um, yeah. Like, I, I knew, I've, I've known women who didn't know what their natural hair looked like. Their, yeah. their parents have been perming their hair since they were like nine, or 10 years old. And now, you know, they're in their 40s or something and they, they have no clue what their natural hair looks like. And some women have, you know, joined the revolution, so to speak. And when they when they started growing their hair out, they were amazed as to what their hair looked like because yeah. they hadn't seen it. What it could look like, were, what exactly. they could do with it, how awesome it just felt being you from head to toe. Well, then, yeah. When the hair grew back without the chemicals, it was it was a lot thicker, a lot fuller, a lot had a lot more life mm-hmm. in it. And, you know, the bathroom wasn't covered in as much hair after they combed <laughs> their hair. But um you know, nobody. Uh, there's not really a, a, a very much of a conversation around the health implications of that. Right. Well, Chris Rock did a, um, I think, a, a great effort to, to bring that to the forefront. Uh, when to see that reaction from that scientist, what? You know, mm-hmm. no. Like when he's like, yeah, people put this on their kids' hair. He's like, no. Why would you? And I, you know, watching these kinds of things is what really reinforces that you know what, Angie, you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, why are we doing that? Why are we damaging our beautiful natural curl patterns? Right? Why are we doing that? We have to, especially if it's for, like, I just, if it's for those same reasons that we've seen over and over where you do feel hair shamed, hair bullied into having to change it, it's not right. You should be allowed to experience the full joy of your own beauty, as unique as it is, you know? And, And I shouldn't have to be touched and prodded every two seconds because it's so unique and beautiful. There has to be some respect, you know? Some respect? Yeah. I mean, don't, I'm sure... Don't touch her sister's hair? <laughs> so would you say? No, it's... Hey, some people don't mind. Some some black women, honestly, they don't mind, and that's okay. Hopefully you're friends with her and you can touch her hair. But if there's somebody who does not want to be touched, then you have to re- respect that as well, you know? Are you, uh, you going to write a book about, um, you know, natural hair? Not natural hair per se. I yeah. kind of wrote the children's books to um, address those different topics because what I, they're really great building blocks for children and they really mm-hmm. reinforce their self-esteem at an early age. Mm-hmm. And the goal was to help them combat what's coming their way. We all know what's coming their way, which is you're, you're not good enough because of the way you look. You're not good enough because the the way your hair is. You're not good enough for X, Y, Z reason. Mm-hmm. So with these books, it's like, it's going to help combat the negativity that's going to come their way, you know? And the, what I've been seeing with kids is just that, that response that, oh my goodness, or mom, can you do my hair this way? Uh, you know, choosing a style that is unique to a black child. Yeah. Like I want my hair in, in Bantu knots. I want my hair in two Afro puffs. I want my hair just like the little girl in the book is just really rewarding to hear. Um, so you said before you were saying that uh, you'd want women to have the choice. Yes. And if they wanted to perm their hair, okay, go ahead. And if they don't want to, then yes, um, then that's okay too. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's you don't want it to to be an obligation. Correct, and that's really what we have to change: the attitude of "I'm not like you, so I can tell you how." You need to look so that I can feel comfortable. Yes, correct. That is what has to change. So when I, I've had this conversation with a lot of women over the years. (laughs) And I often hear Mm -hmm. that we do this because this is what men want. That men want to, you know, the women with the tall hair or, you know, that they can, you know, run their fingers through it and, you know, all these different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and there, maybe you could speak to that because it just seems to be this perception 
from black women that this is the image. So, you know, you turn on the TV, there's a certain image you see, if, whether it's a black woman that's giving the news or somebody that's in a TV show or the commercials that, that is there, there's this particular image. And um, I believe, it's just me, you know, I'm nobody, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that a lot of women sort of look at that and view that as the imagery that black men want. Well, not only women, men do as well, because society does, well, media really has a strong impact mm -hmm. on what we view as desirable. Because if the only things that I'm seeing that are deemed as desirable look nothing like me, mm -hmm. that also starts to create messaging as well, right? Um, that can affect my self-esteem, that can affect the thoughts about who I am. That will also affect a male differently. They may be like, well, clearly this type is not beautiful, this type is. And it's all like, it's a media type of world. So if we're turning on television shows and this is beautiful, this is beautiful, 100,000 things are deemed as beautiful and none of them are you, yeah, it could cause a problem. <laughs> it could cause a psychological issue. Well, and it has, if you notice uh, in the conversations, because you'll, you will hear males saying those kinds of things. But at the same time, I also hear males saying the opposite, mm -hmm. where not at all. They appreciate black women exactly as they are. I mean, they're not necessarily plastered all over media. No, they aren't. But you will meet them. They are there. They do exist. So media has a strong influence. And this is why visual media is important too, whether the materials that you raise your children on, if you're not if you have a black child, you have a responsibility, um, and a lot of times you don't realize the psychological damage that we're doing when the only materials we provide look nothing like them. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, we're just trying to get them a great book to read. We're just trying to get them a doll. But if those materials do not look like them, during those formative years, zero to five, that is when you also start to teach your child what is beautiful, what is special, all those kinds of things. So if the only thing that they're seeing is a blonde-haired doll, and they've got beautiful, tightly curled hair and their dark skin, well, there's going to be a disconnect that begins to happen within the child. And all of a sudden, they're saying, I don't want to look like this. I want to look like Frozen, you know? <laughs> well, you know, you've got to do your best to give a balance, but mm -hmm. make sure that the dominant materials that they're seeing look like them. We're the only community that does that. If you notice, <laughs> all the other communities have materials and things that they pass to their children to help them understand who they are. We don't realize the power of that at the tender age. And this is why I really am happy to have provided materials for parents to help create that normalcy within them to realize they're part of the human experience too, just as they are perfect, right? Mm -hmm. I think we're all perfect. I think we're all meant to celebrate these differences, not attack them. Wow. Uh, that's, that's pretty big. I, I think... You, you are correct that there, uh, there are a lot of people, like the media influence is huge. It is, it is huge, we can't deny that. Um, the image that's, that is portrayed is, for both men and women, about what beauty is, is something that is huge to deal with. Um, but I think most, most brothers, they just want to be able to touch your hair and not have you beat us up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct, but I think, that, I think that's what it is. What, what you know, whether it's it's got tracks in it or it's got you know weave or mm -hmm. it's natural or it's permed. Or, we just want to be able to touch your hair. Have to, you're not, not asking for much. However, different different hair you know different hair types require different. <laughs> maintenance. So the brothers do have to realize that the same hair that's growing out of their hair is also growing out of ours. Surprise! <laughs> and sometimes there will require a little extra maintenance, maybe a little night of a scarf or two, and uh, you know, to keep so things you, you going. You've got it fixed up. You don't yeah. want us to touch it. It's, it's but perfect. this is, it's like a fun thing but that should be shared between males and females about <laughs> their hair. It's not something that they should be used as a weapon to say, this is why I'll never date anybody who looks like you. Meanwhile, it's, you know, and I think that that's what's happening, which is damaging, right? Well, that's, I think you're, you're, you're right when in that. And when there's a perception, we were talking about this mm -hmm. earlier, you know, there's a perception of, you know, um, black women got some attitude ish, yeah. you know, my, a little bit of an attitude. And so yeah. if you, as a guy, if he's going to make a comment, if, you know, if a girl is, does have perm and he's going to say, you know, hey, maybe you should try the natural thing. 
then he's a little reluctant to do that because he might feel that there might be some... Because hair is a touchy subject for women. It is. A very touchy subject for women. And so for a guy to say, hey, you know, maybe you should try it natural, then the perception might be, well, he's not appreciating what she, she's... What, all this work, all this that went into this, yeah. you're not appreciating this, you're telling me, you know. Um, and then on the flip side, if a guy likes the straight thing, you know, it, it takes a while with a hot comb <laughs> to straighten that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> there can be a bit of you know a, a perception out there from from some guys who are like you know what I'm just not going to say anything. <laughs> That's the safe way to go. <laughs> it's the safe way. Just See, appreciate her. Just appreciate her. We're, we'll from get head beat to toe, up. Just we'll appreciate her. We'll, you just know? Get, we'll get beat up. We're just, when we just we just want to touch your hair. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, it's been fun. It's been fun talking yes. with you. Um, now I know you, you're working in some other projects. Yes, I, I I am. Aside from loving yourself and you know no more hair bullying, and I do hope that everybody kind of goes to uh, you know go to the hashtag. Mm-hmm. Are you creating a website for this? Or what? Yes, I am. I, I'm I'm actually creating a website. Um, that's been its own little yeah. thing. I, I am this year. I will have a wonderful website so that people can easily reach me. But I'm also found on all social media, Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. and Instagram under my name. Mm-hmm. So people can follow me there. There's a Loving Me series page as well mm-hmm. that they can follow me on as well. Yes. Okay. And the hashtag. And the hashtag is no more hair bullying. And, uh, you know, I really inc- strongly encourage parents or parents of their children, you know, post photos and hashtag no more hair bullying if you support your child just being allowed to be who they are naturally there's there's nothing it's just hair guys it's just hair <laughs> you know so is there gonna be a third book you know series? what in the series for like this teenagers or for grown grown people well right grown now men <laughs> and, and grown women telling us how we need to just love me well no but or some the, self self-help courses or a lot you know. of the work that i do just in general with um with the books is to drive home that message. Mm-hmm. So I will have other projects that later on that may also influence a slightly older child. Mm-hmm. Um, right now I do have the the series, the hashtag no more hair bullying. There's a loving me song currently on iTunes as well. Loving me song. Mm-hmm. You're going to sing some for us. <laughs> well, when I go to the schools, uh, I do do a little bit you, you of sing the it song. When you go to the show? Yes, I yeah. do. And, oh. um, <laughs> And they, they, you know, they learn the dance, and we have some fun with that. Or oh, even have a dance. Yeah, well, the kids have to learn how to do the movements. I should say oh, yeah. movements. We are on uh, YouTube, you know. <laughs> we get you to do the dance. No, no. The song. <laughs> but the song itself, I was really blessed to have great people come on board. Mm-hmm. Um, I had uh, Jay Martin as well as Owen O Sound Lee, Black Blush, and Raven Groves. They all came J- on wait, board. Hey, hold on, Jay, Jay Martin, the comedian. Yeah. Okay, Jay, if you're listening to this, dude. We're gonna talk about this, all right? Um, what's the he? What's he raps. He doing? He's he's rapping. Yeah. Jay, when did you start rapping, bro? He's a, he's multi talented. He's just amazing, and I've always appreciated his support yeah. for my work. So yeah. Okay, so Jay Martin's on it. Sorry. Yes, Owen O Sound Lee, okay. and as well as Black Blush mm-hmm. and Raven Groves from Ottawa. So I've just been really blessed to have them come on board and do this. So all these guys are on your on your uh, on the song. Yes. You wrote it. Yes. But you didn't sing on it or rap no, on it. No, I mean, I, <laughs> no, not at all. I wanted the best to attack the song, and <laughs> I was really lucky to find the best. So, and there, it's all Canadian talent. So I'm really proud of that as well. Okay, so people can go on. I, it's called "Loving Me." The "Loving Me" song. The "Loving Me" song. The "Loving Me" song on iTunes, and if you don't have iTunes, you can also find it on CD Baby's website. CD Baby. Yes, yeah, cdbaby.com, and okay. then you can just download it there. So what's 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 next in the in the pipeline? So you got got the books. You've mm-hmm. got the song to go with the books. Yes. You know, are you going to start some "Loving Me"? Well, I actually have merchandise coming out. Oh, yeah? Yes, I have a, a girl's T-shirt as well as a boy's mm-hmm. T-shirt and some other things that are coming down the, the pipeline, if you will. So I'm really excited. Um, I'm going to officially launch, launch the website very soon. And uh, everyone will be able to see all the things that I have um, coming up from the Loving Me series. So 
Do you do uh, any public speaking? So for anybody that might be interested in having you come and speak to whether it's a group of children or, um, you know, just a group of people that want to talk about their hair? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> or what they should, what they should or should not do with their hair. Yes, I can easily be found again on on all social media and uh, contacted that way. So, um, absolutely, I do, and it's always a pleasure to be able to do that. I think through conversation, it can create curiosity, it can create change, it can create, you know, information sharing. So it's mm-hmm. important. Yeah. So, um, do you have a daughter? I have. Raised many daughters, yes. Okay. So um, what do you advise um, the little girls about their hair? Well, it's a constant, deliberate, conscious thing to have these conversations regularly mm-hmm. and to just enjoy all of the styling options that we do have. And I, it's just a constant... Um, you always want to expose them to things that help them understand their beauty and understand that um, the messaging, they are born unique on purpose. Mm -hmm. I constantly have conversations about, um, I understand there's there's just such pressure to change, but I constantly challenge those pressures Mm -hmm. with information about who they are, why they are the way they are, and just being self-aware and carrying their crowns just with pride. Mm -hmm. Um, How do you go about I, I don't know starting that conversation because uh, they so with you know, a young the, girl yeah with a young girl so she might be growing up and she mm-hmm. sees her mother her mother's hair might be permed or see her yeah. grandmother like this is the norm of what she sees around her in her family and then you know you as as a mother looking at your daughter and thinking you know I, I need to kind of have this conversation um and in that conversation being able to be supportive and making sure that she's feels she's able to draw some strength yeah you know how do you approach that conversation with that little girl usually um with loving me Mm -hmm. and that's why it was created it was to start those conversations so looking in loving me when you open up the book Mm -hmm. the girls and the guys right away there's a spot where they can (laughs) list my name is they put their name in and i Ah. was born unique on purpose right so when the story takes you on a short little journey about who you are, what you can do, but it also addresses key things. So this is, I love being a little girl. I am rare as a diamond and special as a pearl. It's fun wearing dresses that spin when I twirl. I love being a little girl. But then it also will teach you on the page that addresses the melanin, which is, I love the color of my skin. It's dark because of melanin. When I look in the mirror, it makes me grin. I love the color of my skin. Right away, you'll get questions from young kids. What does that mean? What is that? And as parents, we have that awesome opportunity to start that dialogue. We'll have, you know, look at mommy's skin. Look at your skin. Do you know why we're, why we're the shades that we are? Well, it's because of melanin. Well, what is that? Mm-hmm. Every parent will get the opportunity to discuss that with their child when they use Loving Me. It's an amazing thing because... Kids have a visual representation of how cute they look. That it was, it was really important for me to self-publish because I had full control over the images, and mm-hmm. I wanted our children to look how I see them. So I was really happy with how the images turned out. Did you draw so, the images? No, I did not. But I found it amazing. He's um, he lives in uh, Long Island, New York. Okay. And he's an African Canadian uh, children's illustrator who had recently retired. But when he heard the words, because I sent him the book, he Mm -hmm. loved it and he jumped on board and he said, I've got to do something here. So he created her and I just fell in love with her instantly. And she purposely goes through these little different hair changes. It's all about trying to create just natural conversation. You don't want to bombard them and and become militant Mm -hmm. with the style of teaching. You just want it to flow naturally. So the reason why Loving Me works out is because it is a great story, but at the same time, it does address key things Mm -hmm. that will create that conversation. Can you read something from the the boys' version? Sure, I would love to. A little bit different. Yeah. So with Boy, I Am Loving Me. Check out the kinks in my hair. I'll wear an afro, a fade, or grow locks if I dare. I wear so many styles, it makes people stare. I love the tight kinks in my hair. When I grow up, what a great man I'll be. 
like President Obama or Marcus Garvey. Who I become is up to me. When I grow up, what a great man I'll be. So that's just a little bit from the boys. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. So it, these are good conversation starters with the, yeah. with the kids to be able to open the door. Absolutely. And uh, begin the discussion. And yes, absolutely. And of course, there's going to be just when you're asking them, hey, how was your day at school? Mm-hmm. Hey, or, or comments that, because, you know, as black people, we go through a lot of diff- just different situations every d- in our everyday lives mm-hmm. and that have to create those conversations as well. But as long as at the back of your mind, it's always about really helping to reinforce their level of self-esteem and realize, helping them to realize there's something wrong with the other person who's disrespecting you, not you. Mm-hmm. You know, don't don't internalize that, you know. And you've got to just do your best to do that. Um, it's a daily struggle as black parents, and it's a daily struggle. Is there anything in this book for the little boys about wearing their pants at their ankles? No. No. <laughs> no, there's not. And again, you know, that's a, that's a style choice that, um, you know, they're going to emulate what they see or what they see their, their fathers doing. It depends on, uh, it's always about teaching. It's never easy, right? Mm-hmm. Like with children, there's what you want for them, and then there's also their own experiences that go out in the world. But as long as you're consistently guiding them and supporting them, they'll eventually come back and understand what it is that you were trying to teach. But it's really about just, you know, loving them and helping them love who they are. So we, we started the, this little journey today, yes. just kind of talking about the books that you created, and we talked about um, the importance of uh, the, the hashtag, yes. um, no more hair bullying, and some of the, some of the you've highlighted some of the challenges that society has sort of put out there. Yeah, um, you know, here in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know, and it was the Bahamas. Yes. That the same sort of thing has happened, and and, I'm, and it's happening everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking about this the other day, and that a lot of the experiences that with, within the black community that happens, that you know things, a lot of times people are looking at, well, we live in Toronto, we live in Canada, we're multicultural. It's you know the stuff that we see that's going on in the states is you know it's, it's over there. Um, North of the 49th parallel, things are very different here. We, we see ourselves differently. We're a part of the society very differently. We have our struggles here, but it's, you know, it's, it's what's going on over there. Um, when we, but that's not necessarily accurate. Correct. Because although some of the things, just because there's a border there, doesn't necessarily mean that things kind of stop there. Correct. And the the images that we see in media, you know, you know that spills across the airways, um, doesn't necessarily it doesn't stop at the border. It doesn't stop in Canada or in Bahamas or you know it, whether it be Jamaica or in the UK or wherever. Uh, that those same kind of struggles are still there. Um, your your focus in your in your in your book and as well as with um, the uh, the hashtag, is it? predominantly focus on the challenges that we face here in Canada um, or or what is your it's what a, is your it's, goal? it's a global challenge because mm-hmm. anywhere there's black individuals there's going to be challenges period mm-hmm. but even just the journey of self-love that's that's a universal thing mm-hmm. the ability to embrace who you are your differences that's mm-hmm. a global issue you know, there shouldn't be one standard. Whatever, how you are, it should be your standard. Mm-hmm. How you were born is should be your standard, but that's not the case. So this isn't something that was just here. And I'm, I'm very happy that my books have actually been going outwards. Yeah. Um, I have a strong supporting clientele in the U.S., a strong uh, building clientele in parts of Africa, as well as the Caribbean, and a couple of spots in the UK, because this is just, this is a global issue, particularly where our children are concerned. Mm -hmm. And I think as parents, we realize we want, we mean the best for our children. We want to kind of do something different now. We want them to be able to feel confident and loving, the Loving Me series helps parents do that, you know, particularly with their young children. So Uh, so this might seem kind of, I don't know, backwards in a way. Or silly, what I'm about to say, <laughs> but have you have you considered writing a, a, a loving me book from the perspective of um, of other cultures embracing our culture? Um, 
from other cultures embracing yeah. our culture. Yeah. Because so the books focus a lot. We're focusing a lot on ourselves and building ourselves up and being proud of ourselves and all that, which is great. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, there's also been a, a, a history of um, negative views of us. So right. as we change ourselves, which is, is great, if on the, the counterpart on the other side is not being shifted, is not being told to view things differently, told to think differently, mm -hmm. then, then we're all, our, the perception from that way towards us is always going to be the same. It's kind of like, right. you know, um, after, after slavery, it was like, okay, great, all the black people are, are free, yay. There was no therapy on both sides of the fence. Correct. So there should have been some therapy for the slaves to sort of help them to see themselves as human beings. And then there should be some um, counseling on the other side to say, hey, those folks are human beings too. So, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of times we, we do a lot of the focus on, on ourselves, which is great, which mm -hmm. we need to do. But then in order to address the other side of the equation... Right. For no, myself. We've got, sorry, we've got like three minutes left. Are you serious? Yes. Oh my gosh, time flies. Flag. Flag. I told you it was going to be like Oh my this. goodness, yes. Well, for myself, I can only focus on what I can change, which yes. is myself. Other, I feel other people will have no choice but to change once, once I can change, right? Mm -hmm. Other people have no choice but to sort of adjust from there. I think we need to have a huge, strong focus amongst all of us with this issue, Mm -hmm. to help combat this issue. I feel like once that happens, we start building our own businesses, our own communities, hiring our own children. We don't have to worry about that other piece because I find when I look at the other communities, they're pretty self-sufficient, mm -hmm. regardless of what the other communities think of them. They're self-sufficient because they are able to come together. They are able to pass on their culture. They are able to stay unified to some degree to be able to function. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for us, it's, our goal really shouldn't be to necessarily worry about how someone else views us. I feel our responsibility should really be with repairing our own damage in the way we view ourselves mm -hmm. so that we understand start to realize that you know what we have to build our own we can only we're the only ones who can liberate ourselves no one's going to do that for us so it, uh, to sit there and wait and like even the whole thing for me with this whole grand gra oscar talk oscar i i don't think i think the oscar awards knew exactly who their awards are intended to be for. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, I mean, who are we to say, this is who you need to nominate? I think that we should be filling up the image awards. We should be filling up the awards that are out there that are for us. We shouldn't be hearing so-and-so couldn't be here this night, their award. That's where we need to be, where we are honoring ourselves and focusing on selves, not so much externally, do they like me? Do they like me now? Do, 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 do they like me now? <laughs> And I, I just, <laughs> that's such a waste of energy for me. I think, do I like myself now? Am I good enough today? Mm -hmm. Can I help someone else come up? Can I help someone else feel better about who they are? Can I hire somebody today? Can someone else, hey, I know we've never really talked. I know you've got this kind of business. I'm, I'm interested in starting this kind of business. Can we network? Can we work together? Can we hire some of those kids over there? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that that's the direction we really need to focus on because all other communities function just fine on their own, mm -hmm. they're very self-sufficient. We're the only ones who, everything, I mean, when you look at how our dollar, when they look at the dollar bouncing around in communities, the, uh, was it the Jewish community 27 times or the Asian community 20 something times? I mean, our community, it's gone like 20 minutes. It's, yeah, it's pretty right? quick. That, that just shows how many industries we have yet to build for ourselves. I feel like we have to become self-sufficient. That doesn't mean it's not a realistic thing, I think, to say we're all going to love each other. No, 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 no. I'm saying to function as a community and network so that we can also raise up our children to understand you can go up to here and get hired. You can start your business over there. It will be supported. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So that's really what I think my goal is. So my books, yes, you will see black images. Mm -hmm. But the message in the books is really a universal one. I've, I've read many books that don't include me in it that are fantastic. And I think it's the same with the Loving Me series. It doesn't have to necessarily reflect you to be able to read it. Wow. Um, powerful words. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, can I touch your hair? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's, it's been a pleasure. Um, <laughs> we are pretty much out of time. Uh, so if you know they can, uh, if people want to get in touch with you and support you, then by all means go to the hashtag. Absolutely, Norma Hair Bullying. And they can mm-hmm. look you up on Facebook. Absolutely, Angelo Ndangmo, A N G E L O T, last name N like Nancy, D like David, O M like Nancy, G M like Mary, O. Great. Um, thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in and listening to us on whether it's YouTube, live stream, or the uh, iLive website. Um, <laughs> have a great Sunday afternoon, and we will be back next week. Best internet radio station around. I Live Radio, the new social network. Hey, this is Emily King, and you're listening to I Live Radio. You're listening to I Live Radio. This is Jay Most. Enjoy. Music back to back to back. I Live Radio. Rare groove, revival, slow jams, up front, old school. Welcome to I Live Radio. Hi, I'm O'Day. You're- host from Amalgamation in Sound. Join me every Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. where I'll bring you the very best in UK soul house, broken beat, and everything in